And let me say something else. So why the heck would I know all this stuff? Well, I own a marketing firm. I am the owner of a digital marketing agency, but how did I get here? Well, business never worked properly without fantastic marketing. So I got into it more and more all the time. Direct mail in particular, and certain things, I did not trust people. Sometimes it wasn't fast enough. But if you do a direct mail delivery, if you look at the numbers, at least last time I went and looked, still to this day, you can't prove that your direct mail went out. Hey there guys, it's Nolan Walker here with Roofing SEO Webmasters. Um, I'm gonna do kind of a part two. I've got a slightly new title, but I'm gonna title this one, Roofing Hail Storm Leads Part Two. So Roofing Hail Storm Leads Part Two. And the last time I went over where the leads came from, and this time I really wanted to talk about how to get ready to get more leads quickly. So before I give some of these ideas that you can deploy quickly, and I'm really gonna go after about two things and make some other points, maybe three actually. I'm gonna do, put, it, put in a third bonus one, I think. Um, but before I do that, remember the organic, your website, your optimization, your Google My Business map, your reviews, your branded web effort as Google sees it has got to already be there. This is not for a door knocker coming in from out of town necessarily for the organic side of things. However, what I'm about to share with you can be for a door knocker coming in out of town, but I want to help you do a better job of it. I almost exclusively work with uh, people who are local branded roofers, people who are working in a town, want to be recognized, get found on Google, because really it doesn't work any other way with Google. So they, they have to see those local reviews, uh, local Google My Business account, uh, website connected with it. So <clears throat> let's go over this real quick. So I'm going to talk about Facebook and Instagram, and I'm even going to talk about direct mail. Um, and I'm going to talk about door knocking. So let's start with Facebook and Instagram, because I want to kind of go through that pretty quickly. Most people feel like they know that they, what Facebook and Instagram is and how they can, how they can use it. Um, I am not a huge proponent of, uh, of ongoing campaign stuff. I am of branded awareness. And I, let's, let's start with that first. If, if you watch the first video, we talked about having referral partners. And by the time the hail hits, it's too late to get the referral partner. But hopefully you had a small group of referral partners on Facebook that you were working with that now know who you are. Uh, real estate agents, insurance agents, and other contractors in the area. And if you're a client of mine, I'll go with, through with you how you can do that yourself for just pennies, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month, two or 300 bucks a month to run a referral partner network that brands to you. And now the hail hits and boom, they found me organically. I'm in the map pack three on Google. I organically show up, I've got reviews, and my referral partners are kicking in and giving me people, the real estate agents, the insurance agents, maybe some contractors. Uh, my other referrals around town, church, and you know whatever else, chamber of commerce. So those referral partners, you should have been farming, the organic should have been up there already. Now, okay, so I don't wanna spend much time on that. Let's move on to like, okay, Nolan, what can I do if I don't have that stuff? or in addition to. Mainly I hope and this is one of our um, clients or soon to be client who will say, um, yeah, I've got this stuff, I want a little bit more. So um, I'm, you know, if, if you've ever talked to me before, I never dog any marketing. If it works, do it. I think that Facebook might be ramped up, but something that is really important about you understanding how to do this Facebook and Instagram and this direct mail, I want it done like that, like that, like boom, within 24 hours you have deployed. So this is something you have to learn beforehand. Uh, so let's say you're busy and you're watching this right now and you're like, oh, it's, it's June, it's July, it's August, I'm busy, it's May. 
Well, when, um, you know, October, November, December rolls around, spend some time and learn this stuff before March in case we had an early hail or storm season and you're ready to deploy. The reason you don't want to wait for it, that you can't do this, and you have to do these yourselves in my opinion. Um, and I'll share with you how I got started doing direct mail. I don't do direct mail anymore, but I think it'd work for you in a hail stricken area. The reason you don't pay someone else to do it is because they're going to take a day, a week, two weeks, three weeks. I was talking to a guy on direct mail and he was, um, oh gosh, hail hit this area in Texas on May 28th. Today of me filming this is June 19th and he would be about one month later. So understand that almost all people have called for roofing inspection, uh, hail damage roof inspection, hail damage roof estimate by the time two weeks have rolled around. Because I, I, I hear these leads come through some of my clients and we listen to them. So we're still getting leads on some, you will get trickling, but the lion's share, it's gone. It's gone. I had a client and uh, or I have a client in the Georgetown, Texas area. They had, uh, I talked about them on the last episode, they had a, a baseball size hail. And um, I think they've had close to 1500 phone calls. And it's huge because I don't think in the entire area, there's more than like 20,000 addresses. And, and I don't know if they all got hit, uh, but these guys got tons and tons of business. But the lead started out at like 200 a day and 200 a day and 200 a day. And then they went 80 or I'm sorry, maybe 120, 120, 120, then 80, 80, 80, then 50, 50, 50. This is leads per day. Now 30, 30, 35, 35, 35, and then like 25, 25. And it's kind of still around there. A lot of the calls now though are, hey, why haven't you been out here? What's going on? So just irritated people because they weren't ready to, handle that level because really in reality even in texas this in this area is a once every eight to ten year hailstorm let's just say every 10 years because this is a smaller town and they happen to be there so it's like hitting the lottery it's a retirement year handled properly so if you get onto Inst um, facebook and instagram and you figure out some basic stuff like how to pick demographics how to zero in on a zip code or zip codes or area, how to make a little ad copy, how to get a little lead form, all provided in Facebook as you walk through, which allows you to pick Instagram. Careful on demographics, homeowners, you know, whatever age and up, but homeowners. As long as somebody's a homeowner, and they had hail in the area, that's pretty good. I remind you, here's what's bad. You run the ad two weeks later. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you lost 70% of the potential response of it. So since on Facebook and Instagram, they did not ask to see you like on Google, you have to have that thing hit quick to get response properly off of it. So if you're gonna want big response on it, in my opinion, I mean, if it's, if it's hailing, and your hail trace goes off and you're like, whoa, hot damn, I, we in business, baby. We're going to, here it goes, here it goes. Well, get up and start on your Facebook account right then. I mean, right then, get up. You're going to be tired later. You'll be running off of, you know, energy for three or four days, five days before you crash anyway. Get up in the middle of the night. It hits your market. It's within your 50-mile bubble, whatever and you start that ad, boom, right there on the spot. You pick your demographics, homeowners in that area, they can be a certain age, you can pick different demographics. You can pick people that are homeowners that drive you know, Mercedes if you want. I wouldn't do that in this case because it's, it's a blanket area. So you're going in, you're picking your areas. You know if you don't wanna go into a certain area, you can just not pick that one to market in, okay? You don't have to go into every area that hails. You pick your demographics, you pick, what the people are, they're homeowners, they're this, they're that, and they're in this market. Here's my ad, I already had it ready and I already tested it. I spent $10 and tested it in December. And I wrote all these notes down. I don't remember everything, but I've got these notes on a Word doc or on a sheet of paper, 
taped up next to my desk. I've got, you can't see them, but I've got, I've got tons of stuff digitized, but I got paper all around me because some stuff doesn't fit in a, in a, you know, perfect uh, deal all the time. So I keep important stuff out until I work through it and create a procedure and then it goes away or goes in a file or gets, you know, digitized. Anyway, write it down, put it on a word doc, know where it is. It's important stuff. So you're going to have it ready to go. And now you've got it ready. You know how to go in, you know how to pick your demographics, set up a campaign, do, uh, you know, do a boosted post, a distribution, a lead form on, uh, on, on, um, on Facebook, you know how to pick Instagram. You're confident that when you pick to spend that $500 for the first week of it or whatever it is, that you know where you're going with it. You know, it's, you know that it's gonna work, right? You know it's gonna work to the best of the ability. So you are ready to go on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, if you don't do it this way and you call somebody, you're a week out. You know, you're at least a few days out. At least, I make good money helping people with organic and pay-per-click and other stuff. Some of the stuff I like to train so that it's best for you, you know, and this is one of my suggestions. Okay, so that's Facebook and Instagram. You do a little $10 tester. You know how to run this stuff. You know how to pick demographics. You're ready to go. You've got your little ad slick ready. It's dormant on Facebook. You just have to reactivate it already there okay and all you're going to do is go in and pick the new area delete the old area and then pick the demographics maybe you already had them picked because really all you're doing is changing the area you're in you're real specific and tight with your money you don't want you don't want facebook just spending it freely oh send it to everybody no i want them to be a homeowner i want them to be in this area i don't i want them to be like this that and the other you gotta be careful with your money on it so now you didn't spend money on it with someone else and you pounced on it immediately. So now that first few critical days, remember I told you that first three days, people get like the biggest lion's share comes in immediately. I mean, the hail hit at like three o'clock in the morning, their phone was ringing by like 6 a.m. or it's crazy. And then it was like, it was pandemonium. I think the first day might've been like 400 or something more. I don't remember. Okay, let's move on to direct mail. I don't direct mail, but I know some roofers that direct mail. I know a lot of commercial roofers that direct mail. There's a big network of them. And I know some guys that do it for hail. And I know some other guys that hit hail in a pretty large geographic area. I know an old timer guy that does this in like Texas and like Florida. And Somewhere in that market, one of those markets, it can direct mail every year, right? So, have you ever heard of the bulk mail center? Um, guys, this is going to be interesting, and I think you'd like it if you did it. I used to do this for home security back when I owned another business. I do new homeowners. and Anyway, so, um, and, and it worked great. We did really, really well with it. Um, so I'm not promising that any of this stuff is going to get exactly what you want, but I think that it's smart to be able to flex up and go for it. And you're not spending a fortune doing this stuff anyway. It's not, it's no big deal. <clears throat> it's no big deal to spend a thousand or two on Facebook and Instagram <clears throat> and, and a, and a several thousand on direct mail when hail hits, you know, it's not, so it's not a big deal <clears throat> anyway. So direct mail. Guys, they've been losing direct mail subscribers or people that use it for years. You can walk into your bulk mail center, just Google bulk mail center and your major market, and you'll find the one. You walk in there and say, I, I want to talk to the people that handle the bulk mail. I want to start a new direct mail account. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's these guys back there. And they'll be these basically these direct mail nerds that are like oh yeah and know all about it all the government little red tape and hand you some form they'll help you set up your account you get what's called an indicia that's the little um i don't have a piece of mail here to show you yeah i may here i don't know if this is personalized mail it is kind of but um that little square that's an indicia so 
that company has a has a, a, a bulk mail account or a direct mail account, okay? That little indicia, you keep money on it and then they charge it, you know, on your account. So you get issued a little direct mail number and your little indicia goes on your postcard, okay? So you're gonna go up and say, hey, how do I do this? And they're gonna help you and say, well, you do this, that, and the other. And you're gonna do something, there's two things, and, and I'm, I'm pretty old school about this. I know that there's one called Every Door Direct Mail or EDDM, Every Door Direct Mail. And that'll be on the courier route. There's also one called ECRWSS. And I'm not sure if EDDM replaces, this, but you can ask them about E, David, David, Michael, EDDM, or ECRWSS, which is an Enhanced carrier root walking sequence saturation. Enhanced carrier root walking sequence saturation. And what basically both of these are is that in every male district, if I'm saying some of these wrong, I'm not far off, but every male area, you know, the jurisdiction, there's postal carriers and they'll have a route. One of them may cover 127 addresses and another one might do 221. Depends on how far apart they are. And so that postal uh, person route will have like 180 addresses in it. And if you deliver to every single one of them, which is every door for every door direct mail or enhanced carry route walking sequence saturation, meaning they're walking with the stuff and they have one for everything, then they charge less. And so guys, this is kind of cool because you can go in your district and get a map of the carrier routes and then you know where they are and then you can apply that to hail so you go into hail trace or whatever program go there's a hail there this hail matches up with these uh postal uh routes okay so now you know the methodology of it and let me say this too you would take this mail down that day i mean ideally that day they're going to take probably two or three or five days just to deliver it because it's standard mail or second class or something. They might do it that day. They might do it the next day. They have the option to wait two weeks, but usually they don't in my experience. I'm not guaranteeing anything. I don't know what the U.S. Postal Service is going to do, but in my experience here in Dallas-Fort Worth when I did this years ago, you know, it would be a few days. It wouldn't be that long. And so you're going to walk it down to the bulk mail center yourself. And you're gonna go down there, you would have had rubber bands. Let me let me back up. You you'll order postcards ready to go, 10, 20,000 postcards. You'll have them ready. They're gonna be there ready for you. You're gonna have your postcards ready to go. These postcards aren't gonna cost much. Uh to, you know, three, four, five cents each. You can, I don't know how much. You're gonna spend 15 cents, 20 cents per card. By the way. That's not much more than Facebook charges per ad distribution. It's not far off. Uh, amounts of cost per exposure for um, digital marketing has gone up over the years, and some of the postal stuff has stayed the same. I'm not a proponent for postcards unless there's an issue either, by the way. I'm not saying, hey, you can just go blanket neighborhoods. I'm not saying that. I think it should be done right at a hailstorm. So you're going to order these. You're going to have boxes. They're these long rectangular boxes of postcards, like three by or four by six postcards or a little bigger. You're going to design them. You're going to have them ready to go. You're going to have them printed properly. You're going to ask the people at the Bolton Mail Center how to do this. And you're going to have them ready to go. They're going to be sitting in a corner or in a garage with your sheet, remember your paper or your Word doc exactly how to do this. You're gonna get rubber bands and what's called trays, one foot trays and two foot trays. You're maybe gonna get the walking courier routes in that list so you're ready to go to in your area so you know where those are. You're gonna get rubber bands so you can rubber band them together in a scale. You're gonna get a scale so that I've got my little phone charger, but you'll put um you know a stack of them on your scale so let's say this is 30 
I'm going to weigh them and then I'm going to divide the weight by 30 and I know how much each postcard weighs. And now I can go into a courier route and say 180 addresses times the weight of one, get the weight and then I'll weigh batches of them and then I put a rubber band around them with the courier route information on the front. You're going to have these little cards that you print out and then you're going to take them and put those into trays and an entire, and then it'll, you'll put them in a tray, have a little tray marker in the front. They'll show you how to do all this. It's a little bit complicated, but once you do it, you got it. And once you do it, and it, well, let me stop here. They're gonna help you. And you're gonna know how to do it. And before the hail hits, you will have done a mock trial, just like with Facebook and Instagram. So what would you have done? You'd have gone to your own courier route, your post, postal person, whoever that is, you're gonna give him his walking. That's it, it's gonna call. Now you might've already spent a few thousand dollars and cards and some other stuff. I don't know how much your little yearly indicia is gonna be for your direct mail account, maybe like 350 bucks. You're ready to go. You have a few thousand in this, 1500, I don't know. I don't know how much your postcard's gonna cost, but you can get those postcards in bulk if you hunt around enough. And so you're gonna get this stuff set up and then you are going to do a trial one. They're gonna whoop your butts, all these little postal bulk mail nerds in the back. No offense to any postal people, by the way, but you know what I'm talking about. You go back in there and there's all these people and they're like, they know the regulation. Did you bundle them right? Did you have it in the one foot tray or the two foot tray? Did it have the sleeve on it? Did you put the strap around it? Did you know where to go to weigh it? So they're gonna do all this stuff. Do you have money in your account so that they can charge it? So they're gonna do all these things and you're gonna, you might even do it once or twice. You're gonna pay like a hundred dollars and go send some out. You might even get a job out of it, you know? And so you have this ready to go. You did a mock trial. You spent time during your off season. You got nothing to do, 50% of your business gone somewhere between October and February, depending on where you are in the country. You're gonna be less busy and you're gonna work on this thing and you're gonna get it ready to go kapow. And let me say something else. So why the heck would I know all this stuff? Well, I own a marketing firm. I am the owner of a digital marketing agency, but how did I get here? Well, Business never worked properly without fantastic marketing. So I got into it more and more all the time. Direct mail in particular and certain things, I did not trust people. Sometimes it wasn't fast enough. But if you do a direct mail delivery, if you look at the numbers, at least last time I went and looked, still to this day, you can't prove that your direct mail went out. You can put a whammy address in, send one to yourself, sure. But if they take down multiple items, you don't know if it went out. You just don't know. Also, they're shaving some off. They don't make a ton of money in direct mail. They don't. So why wouldn't I use them? I don't know if they did it. I don't know if they did it properly. And I'm not going to wait a week or two. I want my stuff done right then. And so there's certain things you need help on. This is not something that you can afford to go print up your card, get it ready, have them sit on it, go over to, the, uh, oh gosh, to the um, art department to make your card, approve a proof, get it printed up, ship them over, they get it all ready and trade up and the damn hailstorm's over, man. The hailstorm's over. So anyway, I would just as soon do this on myself. They don't know where the hail hit. I mean, there's all kinds of problems with this, you know? So, does it take some time to learn it? It's like some really weird old, old school um, knowledge to have or, or an old school, um, I don't know. It's just, it's old, but it is a process that you could learn and have it in your arsenal. If you could fire those two things up, just like that, I think you'd be like so pleased with yourself uh, that you knew how to do that. There is no other equipment involved, a little scale. 
you're going to keep trays too. These these tray, you'll you'll know what a tray is. You'll know what a sleeve is. You write this stuff down. You'll have it. You're going to keep like maybe 31 foot trays and 32 foot trays and 30 sleeves for one foot and 30 sleeves for two foot. You're gonna get some postal strapping. You can look up postal strapping and there's a lady that sells it and you can order a box of this yellow strapping. You just, just keeps the sleeve over the tray so the mail doesn't fall out, that's all it is. Uh, and some rubber bands so that they're not all in there loose and that the little card fits in the front. It's not difficult, but it's this old school technique and stuff you can learn and you can deploy it. And I think it's a smart way to handle hail and get as much as you can. Let's talk and wrap up with something. I don't know how long I've even been going here. Let's talk and wrap up with something though. Let's talk about um, door knocking and COVID-19. Um, I believe in door knocking still. I think people go too crazy on stuff. Of course, I'm Texas, that's our response to the stuff here, of course, you know. Um, I'm also a business guy. So I, I don't believe in just shutting everything down and going like, uh, you know, completely 180 degrees the other direction. If you don't door knock, I think you should. I think you should. Um, I will tell you this, I'm a little hypocritical here because I was in home security and there's two things that, in my opinion, have been the biggest in the last 20 years on door knocking, and that's roofing and home security. And I didn't door knock home security because uh, I was scared to do it. I was pretty young. I was in my 20s. Um, gosh, I was, you know, by the time I'd gotten going, when I first started home security, I was in my 20s, mid 20s. Um, so I wish I'd door knocked. It was a huge thing, still is to this day. Uh, the second largest home security company in the nation does something called the summer program and door knocks and they just do great business doing it. Is door knocking less than it was after COVID-19? Maybe, I don't know. Is there less door knocking competition? Yes. Why? Well, roofers think that people don't want a door knocker anymore. And maybe they don't, but I can tell you that when I talk to roofers who are still door knocking, and this is only, we're, we're June 19th, 2020, and it's only been a few months here. And so it's right in the thick, stuff is barely opening back up from COVID-19 and coronavirus, and the roofers that are door knocking are knocking it out of the park. There's not as much competition for it. People will loosen up again. I think door knocking combined with hail is a winning combination. I think it's frustrating for the local guys, but local guys don't worry. You get up there and ranking and handle yourself, your phone lights up from your organic and your brand awareness digitally. So the door knockers that come in from out of town, you know, they're gonna get some business, but they miss almost all of it. I can tell you from doing this, should you door knock or at least hit the six pack and go up and down the streets that you're on, I definitely think you should. We're low, you can stand back further. You need to check your local laws on door knocking, make sure you're registered. Make sure there's not a law against it right that second from COVID-19 or some other restriction. I'm not condoning any of that. You need to check your local legality. Um, but I think people should probably throw a door knocking in on this. If you're, so, if you're set up properly though, you won't have time. You absolutely, if the hail hits properly and you're organically optimized and you hit stuff like what I'm talking about, you won't have time to, to door knock. You put your yards in, yard signs in, you give a re neighbor referral bonus, you refer your neighbor, we'll give you a hundred bucks or whatever you do. And um, you'll probably be too busy. If you're not too busy, I'd be beating the streets if it were me, I think, at least now. Um, I wanna make sure I've got everything. Oh, extra little stuff. You might want to have some extra subs ready. You probably know some of this. Temp workers, even if it's not, they answer the phone. Your staff is going to be so worn out if you're optimized properly. And I'm not talking about people you call. Like I'm talking about family members. So, oh, my niece is old enough. My nephew's old enough. Whoever. Know who you're going to mobilize for answering those phone calls. Those guys were worn clean out uh, by the end of that. They had to stop. Some new people came in. I think it was family. So have those people on your brain of who it's gonna be. 
kids from church, someone's daughter or, or son, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, you should have already had your relationships with your realtors and your insurance agents already. It's too late to call them. Organic should have been up. Mapping should have been up. Review should have been up. And then you're going to maybe mobilize these two things to capitalize. And uh, I think you'd just be thrilled if you did this sort of stuff. Um, I love helping roofers. It's really one of my favorite things to do. It really is a joy to help out. I would love to hear from you. One of the benefits of being with us is you get to consult with me about other stuff, even things we don't make money with. So, um, man, I liked this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And I really look forward to hearing from you someday. Take it easy.